Today on the Marketing Essentials Podcast, we'll be discussing photography tips for the DIYer. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hi, welcome back to the Marketing Essentials Podcast. We are the Marketing Essentials team and we exist to help small businesses grow by providing essential marketing expertise. My name is Bill Parmentier from W. Parmentier Photography. I'm Justin Kerr from Justin Kerr Design. And I'm Alicia Piazza from Custom Marketing Solutions. And today we're going to be talking about tips. Oh, 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 we got to do that. And together are we, we are. To, I was trying to get by that. Go uh, ahead, start it. Ready? I don't like that. I love it already. All right. And together we are the, the marketing, marketing essentials, essentials team. team. Why are you guys looking at me when you did that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no pressure. You're gonna have to go back and watch the video later. Both of you just kind of went. <laughs> Next time no I'll pressure. look at her. <laughs> no pressure, right? Right. No. Anyway. anyway, so today we're talking about the uh, marketing essential tips for the DIY business business owner mm-hmm. who doesn't have the budget to do photography, have custom, or even they're even struggling with doing stock photography. They want to do something a little bit beyond that. Right. So, um, first thing you need to do is we need to, before you even think about the camera, we're going to go right back to what we've been harping on over the last few podcasts, which is you need to have a clear and concise branding. Mm. Because if you don't know where you're going, your photography is going to show it real quick. It's going to look like a family album. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's going to look like my little cousin's Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> or like my daughter's Instagram, which everything is cats. Oh, well, she's got a brand. It's cats. Uh, our she's poor, got the consistency part down. <laughs> our, our poor cat is just like being chased around the house. So we finally broke down at age 13 and said, okay, you can have an Instagram account, mm-hmm. but it's highly watched, you know? Right. So... I, I'm the, the accountability person that sees it all the time, and it's constant pictures of our house cat. Just one picture after Just another. one after another. <laughs> Look, there's the cat sitting by the radiator. Look, there's how a cat on my bed. Fo- how many followers does your cat have? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Terry's killing it, man. He's got like 400 followers. <laughs> So, so <laughs> I don't even know where to go with this one. If you're a business and cats is not your brand, then you got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, but I agree. I, to when you're marketing yourself, if you're talking about photography, mm-hmm. uh, Sorry, you, you definitely off. need to know what your brand is. Sure, you need to know who your audience is. Mm-hmm. Um, so after you have established those, let's say that you you know you do have. A, A good brand, you know who your target audience is, now what? Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, the first thing is you need to find some sort of decent camera. Now, for most of us, that's probably going to be something as simple as the one that everybody carries with them. Yeah, well, the the iPhone, smartphone, Android, whatever you want. I don't want to alienate our Android listeners, so (laughs) smartphone. We do do have one Android um, person here. We? No. Yeah. No. Uh, Aren't you? Oh, are you? Oh, no, no. Oh, yeah. nope. She has come over oh, to the world of Apple, so we're no, good. No, I've always had. It was. Oh, it looked like an Android. It just fooled yeah. me. Mm-hmm. You used to have an Android. Yeah, I did. I, uh, so, and then I drank I the Kool Aid. So you have a dark past. I have a dark past. I drank. <laughs> I drank the Kool Aid. I don't know why we're going on about this, but anyway. I don't know. I've actually have heard that the cameras on the was it the Samsung the Motos. The, oh, the Google, oh one. yeah, the oh yeah. Well, oh, the, the Pixel, the, the Pixel is supposed to be really good, camera. but the um, the Moto G has an attachment because the Moto G has these different attachments you can put on. One's a speaker, oh. one's a phone. Oh. The Mo, uh, one's a phone. <laughs> yeah, nowadays nobody uses a phone. <laughs> yeah, it's don't a worry. rotary <laughs> phone attachment. It's a rotary phone attachment. I get there eventually. Uh, <laughs> so wait, what's a what's a microphone and one's a uh, a microphone? A no, what would you say was a lens? One is a is Wait. a speaker oh. one is a camera and it's an actual camera and it's actually Wait, uh, just a lens or no actual? it's the entire camera that attaches directly onto the back of this unit oh wow like so basically if you were looking at the back of the unit 
the lens would come out of the dead center. Okay. Oh. It's actually made by Hasselblad, which is a big name in medium format cameras. Oh, yeah. They were also big in fashion photography. So a lot of the stuff through the 80s, 90s, and even up till now, a lot of the fashion photography you see in magazines are done with Hasselblad cameras. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, granted, this is a much smaller sensor camera, but it's still a good quality camera. Now, what does something like that set you back? Oh, good question. I haven't looked at that. Um, I would guess probably three, four hundred bucks just right. just for that attachment. But if you are a DIYer and say you own an iPhone, is it really worth it to go out and buy a different phone? Or if you own, if you own an iPhone, no, not really. Okay. Uh, for what most of most people are going to do, you know, I. I I have an iPhone 6s, so I'm what four that four behind now? Is it three behind? I forget. Yeah. Whatever it happens to be, this is a 12 megapixel camera in this thing. Mm -hmm. For most, I, I'm going to go against what I've been saying all along, but you can get away with it if you if you do a few simple tips. You can get away with using the phone at least until you can have a budget put together for being able to do custom photography. Now okay. I've seen a lot of uh, third party vendors that have lens attachments mm -hmm. for the iPhone. Yeah. Are those worth it or are you just better off just using the lens that's already built in? <laughs> it's sort of the whole put the lipstick on the pig kind of thing, you mm. know. Will it give you a little bit, maybe? Do I think it's worth the cost of the charging for some of these lenses? Yeah, I mean some of them are between 60 and 100 yeah. bucks. There, there's a saying in photography that you always buy, um, if you're trying to upgrade your photography, you always upgrade the lens first. But Having said that, I haven't seen any really good lenses put out for like one on the back of smartphones. Okay. So, so so you better have just with your phone. Yeah, I mean, I would almost suggest if you if you really want to spend the money to go, you have two or three hundred bucks that you want to spend, mm -hmm. then you can go out and buy a, a high end point and shoot. Okay. Which will do similar to what you've got here. And like a real camera, not a yeah, real camera. Yeah, um, they Nikon, Canon, all make some decent point and shoot style cameras that don't have interchangeable lenses, but they'll give you enough to get by until you can go up to that next level. Okay. So, I what mean, would you say the main advantage of a three hundred dollar point and shoot camera over a smartphone? Uh, you're going to get a better zoom. You're going to get better better features. Uh, and granted, the phones are getting a lot better. The smartphones are getting a lot better with the features they offer. Mm -hmm. But at this point, the point and shoots are still a little bit more advanced mm -hmm. because that's all they do. Whereas manufacturers like Apple and Google and it's an add-on. It's an add-on. So they're, they're, they've come leaps and bounds as far as where they used to yeah. be. Well, I think in the in the latest iteration of the iPhone, the 10, mm -hmm. they actually have a feature now where you can. Uh, it gives you a depth of field. Yes. With mm -hmm. the, Give you a uh, fake bokeh. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Well, what? smartphone. No, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Sorry. You just used an industry term. <laughs> I, you know, what it was? We, it? We, 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 need go, a, we need a buzzer. Every time no. one of us uses industry jargon, we like eh, hit the no, no, buzzer. No, no. Even better. You know, you, you ever do the, uh, uh, when you're a kid, you ever do the swear jar or when you're a little bit older? Yeah. You ever throw a buck in if every time you. Uh, and that will okay, pay quarter. for we'll do my, my next that? Rhode Island experience. There you go. See? So every time we use jargon, we'll call each other on it. We'll put right. a big X up on the so screen. So you just said bokeh. What? Oh, you don't know what that is? And I, well, I'm assuming you're not talking about bokeh raton. <laughs> <laughs> so what you want to. <laughs> no, no, no. Is, uh, okay, is, so have you ever um, seen those photos that the person in the forefront is very sharp and yeah. in the back it's all blurred out almost looks like little lights and stuff all flat, yes. all in the back really blurred yeah that's called the bokeh effect okay well smartphone dumb user because i didn't know how to do that and i was looking at pictures that my boyfriend took on his phone and he was like of the dog and mm -hmm. they had like the background blurred out and i was yeah. like whoa how did you do that now i know it's called bokeh yeah <sighs> They're mimicking it in the new software that that's coming out for these phones. Oh, they're they're kind of fudging it. Yeah, the it's lens not true. Can't really, okay. Uh, well, maybe it can. I don't, I haven't re truthfully I haven't really looked that close into uh, smartphone cameras to see what the lenses are like nowadays. But in real photography, no, oh, sorry, was that wrong to say that way? But in yeah, huh. in professional photography, yeah. when we do uh, to get a bokeh effect, we get a very shallow depth of field. We do that by our aperture setting. Another industry term, which is basically just how how wide we have the lens open. Or okay. Yeah. So the wider we have the lens open, the shallower the focus points are. So I may only have a two foot uh, area deep. That's in focus. That's in focus. Everything else. Everything is out in of focus. front of it and behind it is out of focus, yeah. and that's how you get those cool looks in the background. Okay. But 
when you're a DIYer, you may not know when to use that feature over. True. Because the pictures True. that my boyfriend took of our dog were really cute, but well, let me tell you, they weren't like. No, I mean, no, and and, and, and you really got to take into account what the subject is. Like you said, uh, some subjects call for that. You know, you don't you want to blur out the background because it's a very busy background, or it's a or you or, want the focus in a very specific area. Correct. Um, sometimes you'll see that used in jewelry shots where they want to get like a diamond ring where they want the diamond to mm -hmm. to really pop, and the background will be really blurred. Mm -hmm. So that that works in that case. Okay, but uh, but also for some. Some uh, I've actually seen some jewelry shots where they want to make sure the whole piece is fully, uh, like if it's a bracelet, they want the full piece to be fully in focus. Mm -hmm. Or if you're you're shower. shooting the inside of a restaurant, you need a large depth oh, yeah. of field because yeah. you you want everything to be somewhat you know sharp, whether yeah, it's I the table right in front of you or it's the bar in the background. Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. So that's that's something you have to take into account. Is <coughs> how can you do that? You know, how do you do that? Uh, it's a lot harder with a phone unless you've got the software within it mm. to do that. A smartphone, and then like I said, they do have it in the smartphones that you can now do that. So just your regular average person, they pick up their smartphone, they take a picture, it's going to have a, a long depth of field. Right? Yes, yeah. So. Um, they try to make it so that it's going to keep as much in focus as possible. Okay. Because most people think about it when you are doing selfies, for instance, you kind of want to see what's behind you. Yeah. You, you don't want that to be... Oh, she's taking a selfie right now. You ready? Oh. Hey, we'll, we'll, we'll put this up on the thing. She's... Oops, she got to go I do that all the time. It's like, why can't I see okay, myself? So if we're in the middle of a podcast and we're going to do a selfie. Hi. There you go. <laughs> and that'll go up on the Facebook page. We'll do that after. But so, so they, actually, we, we, if uh, Alicia is kind enough to send it to us... The, can you do the bokeh thing? Is that, I don't know. Like I, don't I said, know I don't think you can do it on the user because I'm not sure. <laughs> You'd have to look to see if there's a setting on it. I'm not familiar with that phone enough to know. If, you can look through it, Justin, if you want. You keep talking. Talk. I'm going to look I'm for gonna bokeh. I'm going to keep talking. Well, anyway, so let's go to our next step before we end up with 45 minutes of talking about iPhone phones you know uh, the next thing you want to do is when you start thinking about uh, photography with your phone is to start thinking about well what do you need to take into account when you're taking these photos okay well first thing you need to do is take into account the lighting Sm smartphones have a very small sensor now again another industry term but basically that's the area on the uh, that actually takes the picture that receives the picture so, not so it's the lens. Very small. It's not the lens. It's actually like a little chip on the inside that gets excited by the light and uh, allows it to the computer algorithm, which I don't know nothing about. I'll be honest with you. Figures out how to expose each piece, each pixel properly to get you your picture. Now, as you can imagine, a lot of these phones are not really good in real low light settings. For anybody who's ever tried to take yeah. a selfie in, say, a uh, concert setting. Yeah. You know, they come out really rough looking. So, lighting is key. You want to make sure that you have a very well lit area when you when you're taking a photo. Now, let's say, for instance, you're doing a. Uh, no, let's let's, say, let's take a restaurant for example, and they wanted to do some photos to put up on their Facebook page of the food. I know you you and I have talked about some. Food's tricky, yeah. Food is tricky to begin with. And if you if you look at most bars, what do you see when you go into most pubs and bars? If you're gonna if they if they're doing food, it's a pretty dark setup. The lighting is the so, lighting yeah. is usually food horrible. Can look, he's trying the portrait. Apparently, he's taking pictures. I think pictures it's called portrait mode. Yeah. Yeah. Well, portrait <laughs> mode, and then they give you some options like they give you natural light, studio light, contour light. Justin is becoming is a DIY like photographer. Stage light, stage light, mono. So I wonder what like. The stage light is. I'll take a picture of yourself. Right. I didn't even know these features existed on my phone. Yeah, well. All right. So. Are you doing a selfie? No. Uh, we'll do Me? a selfie. We, yeah. You and I will do a okay, selfie. Okay. Alicia's going to have to put all these up on the. Uh, I, I don't want. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, now, is the lens on the front the same as the one on the back? No. Great question. No, see, it's not. These are things that. No, it's not. Oh, look at that. See the, the background's <gasps> Whoa, out of focus? That's creepy. Can you see? Okay, well, here we got to do so this. That Ready? Was called Everybody see? Can you see? I, I don't I'll know. post it on the we'll page. Ha we'll, have, we'll have Alicia post this up on the page, so or, or Justin post it up on the this page. This one was, this was the portrait mode, and it was called stage light, so... It's just as if it was... If it was a, it's, a, it's not really bokeh at that point, what it's, they're doing. It's just more of a shallow depth of field. Uh, not even that. What, no? they're, what they're doing is, <laughs> in a way, what they're doing is the, the computer algorithm is actually looking at this and cutting us out. 
and putting this onto a dark background. Oh, creepy. So it's not. It's really creepy. <laughs> Don't wow. do that. One. But anyway, so let's not get too far into uh, that one. But. So I'm having fun. I don't know. I know you are, but I need Justin's you to. Justin's giving DIY need, lessons on iPhones now. I need you to get back into the game <laughs> here with I'm me. I'm sorry. Come on. Focus. Focus. Come on. focus. Have you been focus. talking this whole time? I have been. <laughs> okay. And time, that's it. Good night, folks. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, so anyway, lighting. So, so now we've got lighting down. Now, lighting doesn't have to be like what we have here. Yeah, you can't really see it. Uh, those of you who are watching or listening, but we have some uh, professional quality lights that are shining on us, so that that's way we look good. So good. Yeah. Hold on. Anyway. Uh, So most people can't afford to do that, but I've taken some pretty cool photos with just a desk lamp. It's really not that hard to get good quality lighting from a desk lamp. But then, you know, at the same time, you've worked with lighting, so you kind of know how to sure, position sure, it. Sure, sure, sure. There's a great site. Um, not uh, under your face like that. Yeah, you don't, yeah, do you remember that from a couple of podcasts and podcasts ago where we had the picture from Maglite where they had the, the light underneath right, the, the person's right. chin. That's, that's, that's not the, I mean, that was used for effect and worked very well, but that's not but what I, you want to do. But in terms of either using a, you know, a desk lamp or using natural light coming through a window, mm -hmm. what's, what tips would you have for someone to say, okay, here's how you can utilize, you know, a, 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 an existing light to your advantage. Okay, well, what you got to remember right off the bat when you're dealing with a, a desk lamp <coughs> or any open light lamp mm -hmm. is it's going to be a harsh light because you've got a bare bulb in most cases okay. that are going right on it. So if you can find a way to diffuse that, now again, I'm, I'm throwing out all these fancy terms today. Oh, all, soften the light. Uh, yeah, soften, soften the light. You can use... A, People still use handkerchiefs anymore. Uh, uh, yeah, but some sort of cloth, cloth yeah. to diffuse the yeah. light. You could use that. You could use a piece of white paper because white paper is got just enough okay. allows just enough light to go through. As long as it's not a real thick piece of like construction paper, right? But just but like a, a regular paper, piece of printer paper, yeah, that'll diffuse the light. Okay. The other thing you can do is you can bounce the light. So in other words, if you have a white wall. Bounce the, bounce the lamp off the wall. And, and so the, and, and, the light so, that's reflected off the wall becomes your light source. Exactly. Oh. Okay. And then what that does is it gives it a nice softer light. Now, there are some cases where you're going to want a harsher light, but when it comes to something like food, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pop this up on screen so people can see what I've been referencing here. Well, that looks to me like she's using natural light. Of yes. course, who knows? I mean, that's a professional photo. It's they a professional photo of DIY been, photo. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's a professional, this is a website that, that talks about five tips for using DIY images to engage customers for your small business. Right, and none of these are DIY no. images. Well, of course not, because they have to show you, um, you know, a, a picture of what, you, what they're doing. And this person's taking a picture. Looks like an iPhone 5. That looks how small that is. But anyway, you'll actually, well, I'll give you this is a quick example of what bokeh is a, a, a similar type of bokeh. If you look in the background, yep. I, and you probably see my mouse online, let me see. What, yeah, you can see it. Um, you'll see that it's very blurred, but the forefront is the person holding the camera, and that's nice and sharp, tack sharp. And right. that's where your eye goes to focus. That's where on. your eye goes to focus. Right. Even though that's only a small portion of the picture. But yeah, if at all possible, use natural light. Okay. Let me back that up as far as lighting. You can use, uh, you know, manufactured light, but sometimes a nice window with a shade, a, 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 a white shade in front of it can produce beautifully uh, soft light. Sort of lets in that diffused light. Yes, same thing, same exact thing. Um, so in this picture, it, it definitely looks like the source that they've used is somewhat like, I would guess that this is like on a park bench outdoors almost, so I would guess mm -hmm. it's probably... I think that's what they're shooting for. That would be my Picnic guess would be... Like. Yeah. yeah. So, so number one thing is light. Although I don't think I've ever eaten pancakes on a picnic table. Okay. <laughs> those, that's what those are, pancakes? I, I guess so, yeah. it's pancakes. So, so, it's, hard to, it's hard to tell. I mean, okay. She probably should have hired a professional. <laughs> should have hired a like round <laughs> <frame> <laughs> we are, Here we are tearing apart a photo that I'm trying to give it as an example. But that's <laughs> all right. Just, no, kidding. Just, just keep pushing through. <laughs> so, yeah. so the next thing after you go talk about lighting is avoid clutter. Okay. You don't want to, if it's not essential to the photograph, try to avoid it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, what I mean by that is if you're in a crowd, everything's going to show up in the back. It's going to distract people that's back there okay. taking the picture. That's why the blur takes that out in uh, mm. a bokeh effect. But if you're doing something like, I'm going to scroll back here for a second just because I can show that. The only thing that you see on that table behind the person's hands is what they want to focus on, which is the plates of the food. And yeah, I guess the jelly in the, I guess that's jelly and something else that's off to the right that's not mm -hmm. really in the, the camera uh, photo. But again, it all flows with 
what they're trying to convey in the it's scene. It's all related. It's to all related. The subject yeah. matter. It's not yeah. like they have this and a microphone off to the right. You know where you're going. Why yeah, is that there? Yeah, or, or you know someone's purse or. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, pen. so second thing is make sure you deal with the clutter. Mm -hmm. Okay, because if you don't deal with the clutter, it's going to be distracting for the viewer of the photo. Right. And they're not going to get the what you're aiming for as far as the image. And then thirdly, uh, I, I would definitely say. Um, Make sure that it's a decent quality image because I'll go back to what the question was before that I didn't answer, which was but you just asked the difference between the two cameras on the yeah. phone. Um, now, I'm old enough to remember when the first smartphones came out that they only had one camera on them. The and front then, facing. Yeah the, yeah, the front facing one, which, which was uh, geared towards uh, dealing with, you know, things you take pictures of and then all of a sudden we started dealing with um, people wanting to do selfies what's a selfie thing so they the manufacturers started putting cameras on the they should selfie. actually call the new generation the selfie generation I think they I think they might be doing I've that, heard that I think I've heard that it, term are they yeah okay, I think I've heard that that's term basically like but what, what they use phones what, for what most people don't realize is the camera on the back side of the, of the uh, just bang the microphone here on the back side of the camera on the phone mm-hmm is actually more powerful than the one that's facing you. Okay. So on this camera, for instance, on this phone, which is the iPhone 6S, um, I believe it's, don't hold me this, but I believe it's 12 megapixels if I'm, if I'm taking a picture of somebody. Front facing. Front facing. If I'm taking a selfie, it's only like two megapixels. Oh, wow. It's a huge difference. Mm. So the last thing you want to be doing, if you can help it when you're doing a product photo or service photo for your website, is to be doing this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's fun for it to play around with, with selfies. Right. But if you want a, a, the best quality you can get out of a smartphone, shoot with the back facing, uh, the front facing, excuse me, uh, camera. Mm -hmm. That makes because sense. that's going to give you a better quality. Yep. All right. So keep that in mind. Then, of course, the rules of thirds. Do you either one of you know what the rule of thirds is? Yeah, I, I do. do. Okay. Yeah. Is uh, it me. where you don't fill up the whole picture? Kind sort of. Sort of, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh. where you, if you have a photograph or any kind of image, um, you usually try to make the focal point. If you imagine that image right there of like the boy okay. that Nobody just can see got this. his like, haircut. Give me, give me one second. Let okay. me. If you divided that image into three equal parts. He's kind of so into say. one third of it. He's into one third. He's between the second, second and the third third. The majority and the. Yes. So yeah. it, it, what that does is it creates some uh, asymmetry and it provides a little bit more uh, interest to the photo. Rather than having him dead center, yep. he's off to the right just yeah. a little bit. Yeah, so basically... Yeah, that's what, easy to forget when you're taking well, pictures. And the thing is, is, what's the first thing you do um, when you are taking a picture of something? You aim. You aim to try to get the set dead center on the, on the floor. Right, and that yeah. doesn't necessarily generate the most interesting no, composition. No, it really time. doesn't. Yeah. And a lot of times it'll hide of what, a lot, what's going on in the background. I'm going to go right back to this again. Which the background can be part of the story. Absolutely. Like in this case, um, the picture that Justin was just referencing to a minute ago where you have this young boy, it's actually at a barbershop. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to tell the unique story of this barbershop uh, in a way that would capture viewers' attentions. Well, right. obviously, a kid with a freshly, uh, freshly done haircut playing around with a little mustache thing. And, you know, it's cool. And right. you can see, obviously, in the background that they have the, the workstations and the, and it's, the chairs. It's one of the things that I'm like to tell my clients is you know if they have a their service space like this barbershop mm -hmm. show a happy outcome sure that's absolutely. the best way to market your business mm -hmm. so in this case they did a great job of that it's like you know here's a happy outcome yep right. and you don't you don't actually need to see somebody cutting his hair you get it you see the background you oh this is a barbershop mm -hmm. here's you a, get a kid. pretty good idea by looking oh at he must have just gotten a haircut yep. I think 90% of other businesses would have just been like done like the empty chair Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't now, have gotten creative like now that. Now, this 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 uh, group actually did something to add to that was also to show the barber mm -hmm. himself in action. So, and he's got kind of an in interesting visual himself because you look. What's the first thing you see? Man bun. Oh, okay. Oh. That was the I was first thinking, thing I saw. I was thinking tattoos, but hey, you know, yeah. to each his own. But the man bun, yeah. When is that phase gonna go I, I don't far? Know. Far. I like no. his shiplap wall. We have a shiplap wall. Yeah, that's, right that's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he's twirling something in his hand. Uh, oh, one I'm of those old brushes, scissors. or maybe yeah. it is scissors. It, to me, I'm gonna guess the scissors. It looks like they've got just enough blur on. Hard to know, but it, yep. because of the way his arm is and everything, it's kind of a it provides sort of a focal point. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, so. it's an action shot. And again, I think most businesses would have gone naturally with like just a 
photo of the the shop and not adding like these yeah, action yeah. and you know human elements to it. And so. don't get me wrong, there are t- good times for for having just a picture of the shop. But when you're doing it yourself, you want to make sure you give it some character. You people relate sure. to yeah. people. Absolutely. You know, I mean, uh, Alicia can tell you this with social media posts. It's like yep. you're scrolling through, you see a person's face. It's going to get your attention. Exactly. Now, exactly. the lighting on those pictures was really good, too. And, you and can it, see where the lights kind of complement. Yeah. And, and what you got to look at here is is it's all available lighting. They didn't do anything spectacular by saying, we're going to bring in a, a major light setup, so on and so forth. This was all done with a similar to an iPhone. Mm-hmm. So it, it was do it yourself. They kept in, in mind, keep it interesting. Mm-hmm. The rule of thirds. Yep. Keep your clutter away. Mm-hmm. And make sure it's a good quality image, the best quality yeah. you can get out of whatever you're using. You notice they cleaned off his workstation and left. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. There's just a no few, clutter. few yeah. elements that they left there, but I guarantee you all of the crap that he normally has on that workstation is yeah. somewhere <laughs> sitting off to the side. Just getting ready to be put back up. And, you know, it's funny because when I will go shoot for there's a local contractor that I shoot for, he does remodeling, um, and inevitably... Anytime I go into a remodeled bathroom or kitchen, mm-hmm. the first thing I have to do is remove all that clutter from the scene. Right. The soap trays, the the, uh, the toothbrush holders, the, the 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 various toiletries that are all over the sink. Right. Yeah. That stuff all has to go because it distracts from what this person was doing. You know. So that holds true when we're doing our own photography. Mm-hmm. It's like staging. Yeah, it's staging. Yeah, yeah. staging. And there are actually companies out there that will come in and. Do just that, right? right because right. I know you so well. Uh, I, let me get back I'm to like, the, no, no, no. I want I you to. Let me stay on this one. This photograph here. What's the first thing you would do in Photoshop to this? I would this this right here. Is that what you're talking about? I this? knew it. <laughs> He would take for, those that you, out. for those of you at home uh, that can't see it or, or don't quite see it, uh, there's a little looks like an outlet or something that's right behind the this this gentleman's left shoulder, right? And it's crooked. <laughs> yeah, you just Photoshop that right uh, up. That'd be just poof, gone. Because it, it, it doesn't add anything no. to the photo. And, and, you you can't, and that's the other thing. You can't be afraid to uh, take away from a photo something that just doesn't make sense or doesn't need to be there. So do you Photoshop, Bill, when you do your Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, there, there are purists out there who say, well, you, can't, you shouldn't Photoshop a thing. But the reality is there's no such thing as a pure image anymore. Mm-hmm. Days in, in the days of, of uh, film, yeah, there were pure images. People, you know, you took it, you developed mm, it. Sometimes. No, no, I mean, you could you could doctor images, but it yeah, wasn't. But you had to use. You had paint. to have a lot more knowledge to oh, do yeah, it. Oh, yeah, and it was paintbrushes and airbrush. Exactly. Nowadays, you can put a filter over something and you can make it, you know. Right. Uh, Photoshop itself has a, an action right now where you can just, or not an action, but a uh, thing you can select that will select the person. And it'll cut out the person just by. Oh, that's awesome! So, you, so you you can pull a picture a person out of the photo and make them disappear, or you can cut them out and put a whole new background in. Right. So, so, and somebody just popped into your head as soon as you said you can make somebody disappear. <laughs> and <laughs> ten bucks says it was a relative. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> the family. Album. Uh, yeah, my, my family doesn't listen to this. You know. Anyway, no, I'm kidding. Um, and so, filters yeah. are like common now because they're all like in social media. I mean, they have like more crazy filters and stuff, but people like are yeah. ta- used to uh, filters. And here I'm leaving this on. Let me go back to, so you can actually see our level. When I have kids, I'm going to have to tell them I had to take pictures without filters. <laughs> <laughs> like no, that's how I really look. Back that in is my day. No filter. Hashtag no filter. Now, <laughs> Alicia, as a social media expert, you you know where filters originally started from, right? Well, models, I guess, and Instagram models, yeah, and yeah. just in yeah. Instagram was probably one of the uh, leading edge as far as filters. Now, mm-hmm. how many different filters are on Instagram nowadays? Twelve, thirteen, and they're always adding something new. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can like have apps now that actually filter even farther. So if you have a blemish, you can kind of go in and like and mm-hmm. clean it up and stuff. I'm way too lazy to do all that stuff, so I just don't take pictures mm-hmm. of myself anymore. <laughs> actually, you know what? Before we go too far, White we talked teeth. To, just to backtrack for one second here. Oh, here's that rule of thirds. I've got a thing yeah. that, that I forgot I had this here. I'm going to show you guys a, a real quick. This is what the rule of thirds looks like. If you see here, you'll see that the photo oh, cool. has a mug on it. Mm-hmm. And the mug in, goes right between two intersections of the quadrants. Not the quadrants, what are they? Quadrants four. Yeah. What is Anyway, you know segments. what I mean. Segments. Segments, yeah. thank you. So there's nine segments, and they have the logo going through the top two segments, and then they've got the cup going through two other segments. No, it's just my then, eyes, or is that bokeh? Well, I, I, bokeh gets overused on a lot of things. Okay. 
This is just more background blur. Okay. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, shallow, I don't even know the difference. Sh- it's what they call a very shallow, shallow depth, depth of field. field. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't know if I have anything that. Let me, let me scroll through this here first. This tells you a little bit how to do it. In, oh, interesting. In iPhone, uh, I can put. The, I'll make sure I get the links put on the uh, uh, show notes for this. Mm-hmm. But this will show you some ideas on how to light and things along that line, how to properly light a situation, and how to set up a product shot and so right, on. Right, because so you look at that picture there of the mug, and this it's way less compelling. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly, because it's dead center. <laughs> and look at the background. It's cluttered. And yep. well, it everything wasn't. we said not to do, it's basically did in this photo. So that's like a really great example because they didn't change anything with it. Like they had that sign at their company. Mm-hmm. They had that mug. And yeah, you can oh, take Oh, you're talking picture. about this one up here. Yeah, so that's the same mug. Sorry, I'm going back to I'm a different like background. Crazy there. Yep. And all they did was they took a couple seconds to think about positioning the mug. How can this, you know, mm-hmm. and that just looks what so... What makes an interesting composition. And, and the, the other thing that people don't ne- necessarily see right off the bat is it's actually showing the logo twice. It is. Right. You get the, the background logo, which you can <clears throat> read what it says. It's blurred, but and you can read what it says. The other thing, too, is whoever took this got down on their knees mm-hmm. to give a low angle point of view. That's a great, great point. Position. Um, yeah, think about, you know, most of us just think from eye level. Right. Sometimes you, some of the best photos that you can take are when you do something that's either really low or really high. Mm. My business has just started doing drone photography and drone videography. And there's a real uh, demand for people having things that are from way high now. Because mm-hmm. it gives you a totally different perspective. Sure. You know, as opposed to, <clears throat> and same thing with when you, when you come, when you get down low. But most people just think, I'm going to shoot at eye level because that's where I'm standing. Right. <laughs> and that's, that's how the eye naturally sees. But that so. is a great example of how a mug on a desk can be two different images. Oh, yeah. Just just that one. And uh, scroll back to this one here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, this one here, if I saw this one here on a, uh, just an right Instagram feed, I'd probably just, yeah. or a Facebook There's feed. Very little interest to it at all. Yeah. So basically, oh, see, remember I talked about diffuser okay. earlier? This is this oh. is talking more about using a, a uh, professional or semi-professional style DSLR. But putting it, a diffuser over the flash. They put a diffuser over the pop-up flash. Yeah. Let me just tell you right now, if you own one of those cameras, just break off the, the, the flash on top. Don't ever use it. Really? <laughs> just don't. Well, don't <laughs> use it because if you break it off, it, it kind of kills the resale value. <laughs> what I mean is I've got one on my camera, and I don't think it's ever even popped up. Well, other than accidentally, because <laughs> I hit the wrong button, I've never used it. I don't even know if it works truthfully because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they give such harsh. Even with a, uh, a diffuser over the top of it, they give such harsh, harsh shadows and harsh lighting on it. It's just yeah. horrible. Okay. So anyway, sorry. but if you're listening to the podcast, definitely go to the website to check the link out after this because it's just very. There's it just seeing those two photos. Yeah, absolutely. it really brings the DIY points that Bill's trying to teach you on um, to light. And, and, and the thing is, is a lot of it's going to be trial and error. Now, ideally, like, I, like I've like i said very many times before, is ideally you should be hiring a, a, a professional photographer to do the custom work for you. They've done all this practice. They've done all this learning to figure out what the best lighting is, what the best composition of a shot is, um, how to use the, the rule of thirds. They've done this day in and day right. out. Well, you could give a professional photographer an iPhone and say, go take some mm-hmm. pictures, and you'd get Better good than, results yeah. because mm-hmm. it's it's the professional using the tool. Absolutely. It's not the tool making the, the great uh, images. I mean, you can... Yeah. You, you could give Tiger Woods a $20 set of golf clubs and he'd still beat the pants off you. Actually, you know what? I'm, I'll, I'll get you the link so we can put it in the show notes. But there is a um, photographer out there who has a, a <clears throat> podcast that I watch from time to time. It's a, it's a vlog, I guess they call it because it's video. Is this the hair guy? No, no, no. This is oh. a different guy. This guy, what he does is he shows the fact that it's, it's all about the person using the camera and not the camera itself. Yeah. But he's got this really cool podcast where he invites professional photographers onto his podcast. <clears throat> I think he lives out in Japan or China. I'm not sure which. Um, off the top of my head. I want to say Japan. And he invites people to come there. High name photographers. I mean guys that are way up in the industry. And uh, he'll invite them and he says don't bring your camera gear. I'm going to provide you with a camera. Mm-hmm. And you're going to do a challenge shot. So I'm going to set up the venue. I'm going to set up the challenge. And I'm going to give you the camera you're going to shoot with. Cool. And these photographers still can get 
amazing shots. I can think of one. There's this guy, Chase Jarvis, who is a uh, photographer out of Seattle. He was invited to go to this, to this thing. He was given a half a megapixel, which is about a 24th of, of an iPhone. Mm. So is that like flip phone style? It was a Lego, kid's Lego phone. Oh, my goodness. And he was asked to shoot a skateboard park. And he came up with some amazing images. Mm. With a kid's toy phone camera thing. Because it's a professional. It's all about the professional. Now, since this podcast is about DIYers. I'm sorry. Um, can come back on that. <laughs> I, you know, what you're saying, if I, if I understand this correctly, is, you know, with a smartphone mm-hmm. and with some of these tips that we talked about, like thinking about mm-hmm. lighting and composition and all of that, you can take better photos. Sure, absolutely. So there, there's definitely some room here for someone who's going like, look, I just don't have the budget mm-hmm. for a professional photographer right now, but like we do with all our podcasts, we're trying to help exactly. small business owners make the best out of what they have. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And if you've got the time to put into it, you can get a decent quality photo. And I think especially with social media, like things move quickly, so you're going to need some DIY shots. Sure, sure. You know? I'm not, I'm not uh, naive enough to think that people are going to, even top-notch uh, businesses are going to hire a custom photographer for everything. You know, they're going to they're going to use some. It's just like sometimes you don't you want the action shots too, and you don't the photographer is not on scene or whatever. Sure, sure, so. yeah. It may be something that's happening in the moment. You don't have time to call up the photographer and say, "Get over here." <laughs> you know, that can happen. You're not on call twenty four seven, Bill. <laughs> no, I am for a price. <laughs> So probably not in the DIYers budget. No, probably not. But so let's, so let's tie this up. So yes, to answer your question, Justin, people can businesses can make decent quality photos with an iPhone if they just follow a few simple rules. And hopefully we put those forth today. And again, we'll leave all the links in the uh, the show notes so that people can actually wow. go back and see what I referenced. I found give, this cool feature back. now that I'm going to use. She's going to be playing with her phone for the next three hours. <laughs> I got so, a picture I, of you guys here. You have to. Uh, I, that's just scary. I'm sorry, you folks. Have to, you have to send that to Bill so he can include it as part of the. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're going to have to. Yeah, please do. Pass the, I'll, the two that we took. The, yeah. Pop the those selfies. in and we'll do that. So we're getting to the end here because we're going way over here, folks. Well, that's okay. We're having fun. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, what fun, else do you want to talk? What else do you want to say? Uh, I think I've said about, just about all I need to say unless you have a qu- unless you guys have any questions that I missed or anything that it, you know anything that you would think hey here's this is important for thinking about. You know? Well, I mean, we talked about lighting and we talked about, you know, do you need the lens add-ons and mm-hmm. do they any good? What about um stabilizing the smartphone, you know, with a tripod or some other kind of Great um, question. I didn't even think of that. Uh, tool like that. <laughs> they make uh, clips. As a matter of fact, I've got one somewhere. I might even have it here with me today. Uh, uh, but they make little holders. Hey, I picked up my phone and it starts flashing. I don't know what that's all about. But anyway. Must have hit self-destruct. And ding. I just got a text. Okay. Sorry, folks. You all heard that. But um, for me. Sorry. Oh, oh, <laughs> that was Alicia <laughs> sending me the photo because it attaches to my phone, my camera, and my phone and my desktop. Anyway. Um they do make, you can go to Best Buy, mm-hmm. and they make a little mini tripod. It's a little foldable tripod about four or five inches, yeah. and it's a cell phone holder. And so you can turn it either way. Well, freestanding, or do you clip it onto something? Yeah, they make ones that you can clip on. They call them gorilla mounts, which basically the legs on the tripod actually wrap around things. Oh, so you can actually, uh, like they're about 25 bucks. Put it on a post or yeah, yeah, wrap yeah. it around a chair leg or something. Or put it around a, a, a rear view mirror on your car if you want to take a picture. I wouldn't suggest driving while they're there. <laughs> yeah. hey, look, there goes my phone. <laughs> but, <laughs> Phones and mirror are further away <laughs> than they, they appear. appear. Yeah. <laughs> Much further when they come flying off. But, uh, but yeah, you can, buy, you can buy little mini tripods that are made for doing that okay cool. um what if you have like a you know regular tripod do they make things that you can actually yeah. attach the phone to a regular tripod yeah they do they you can do a amazon search or a google search okay and you can find them they're just basically little clamps now the reason right i on. brought that up is because they're you know if you're doing making a photo in low light mm-hmm. or where you need you know or you don't want the uh, or maybe you're doing a video with mm-hmm. your phone and you don't want it shaking mm-hmm. in your hand uh, a tripod would be useful it, for that. Right? I'm going to do a little uh, promotion here, even though I, I no way get any money from them. There's a Kickstarter campaign that just ended not too long ago called Smooth. S M O V E. Smooth. 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 Yes. I like that. <laughs> You're a smooth criminal. Smooth. I don't know. I, I, just, it, I don't know. Okay. I, well, anyway, it what? It's like some sort of weird cow. It's Ooh. actually. <laughs> I like it. It's actually a gimbal for your cell phone. 
Now you got to explain what a gimbal is. Okay. Oh, my gosh. I know. We're going way, way over. <laughs> Sorry, this is going to be a oh three-part series. Gimbal. Three gimbal. Okay, I think gim- Alicia's head is full. Put in a glossary of terms. Okay, yeah, we're going to have to put a glossary in terms for this one. Sorry, but uh, a gimbal is basically a free-floating head that you would attach your phone to. And they make a giant selfie stick, basically. Ooh. But it can be used either way. It can be used as a selfie, but it can also be but flipped it, around. Basically, it's a weight that... Yeah, and it's all, all electric, and it's electric. Right, uh, it's run by like batteries, oh, okay. so it's a rechargeable. So when you move your hand like this, the phone stays perfectly straight. So it's sta- it's a stabilizer. Okay. Think, of it, think of it as a giant stabilizer. Stabilizer, got it. So a gimbal is just a, a fancy word for so a you stabilizer. So ho- you can still hold the phone and provide some stability. You could literally run with this thing. <gasps> that is so and cool. It keeps it they run about one hundred and twenty-five dollars. They're not cheap. But they're definitely something to play around for with. For the hardcore <laughs> selfie generation. For the hardcore selfie. 125 now, interesting, is a small price Interestingly to pay. enough. What is that, like nine cups of coffee? Yeah. Interestingly yeah. enough, the, the, gimbals actually co- <laughs> the gimbals actually come from uh, aerial photography and videography. They did it away when, when they were doing helicopters and stuff like to that. Keep oh. To keep the camera keep everything going. Okay. And that has actually worked its way into drone photography. All the good drones now have a three-axis gimbal, which is basically it has three different axes. Okay. Axi- axes? Axes. Yeah, there you go. Axes that will stabilize. So it'll, no matter which direction you're moving. And now they're, they're bringing it over to selfie sticks now. Cool. So. That's so anyway. some good stuff. Yeah. Now that everybody's head is full of uh, interesting and uh, new information. Uh, so I, I smooth if you're out there, you're another sponsor, you owe us. No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah we'll send take us, one for free. Send, send us three hundred dollars. Yes, <laughs> for mentioning you, or they'll. I don't know. Anyway, or we will kill this. Well, no, never mind. That no. was that was something totally different. Yeah. All right. So having said that, I think we are. All right. So just sum this up. Sum it up. Yeah. Hire a photographer. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> for some things, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm all kidding aside because. I like saying that, but uh, okay. So let's let's go through the the steps. Think about your brand first as a business. Mm-hmm. What is your what what are you what statement are you trying to make with the photo before you even pick up your smartphone or your mm-hmm. camera? Right. What are you trying to say? Next thing is look, look out for clutter. Mm-hmm. Okay. Composition, rule mm-hmm. of thirds. Make mm-hmm. sure it looks good, uh, and then obviously make sure it conveys what you want it to convey as far as the look. Lighting. Lighting, etc. You want to make sure. Angle. Oh, sorry, I forgot lighting. Sorry, yes. Uh, why do I always forget lighting? Um, yeah, make sure it's well lit. Mm-hmm. Okay. The better lit, <clears throat> the better. Because what happens is if you're in a dark setting, you're either going to end up with a lot of blur or you're going to end up with what they call noise, which is mm-hmm. kind of these little pixelated areas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks and grainy. You're like grainy, yeah. yeah. We, we called it green in the film days. They call it noise now in digital days. But it's basically just a fancy term for looking a little weird. Yeah, yeah. it makes your image look bad. Yeah. Just plain bad. Yeah. So those are what I would say would be right. the things to look for. So, cool. Well, thanks for giving us the, the tips for the DIY. No problem. And um, make sure uh, that you check us out on Facebook. Like us. Follow us. That's Marketing Essentials Team on Facebook. Yes. You can also go to our website, marketingessentialsteam.com, mm-hmm. and there you will find out more about us. Mm-hmm. as well as you can access the webinar that we did um, a few months ago uh, that talks all about yes. uh, some of the marketing essentials uh, for your small business. And you can also access the podcast there. You can contact us through the contact form. You can ask us questions. Harass us. Harass, Harass us. us, yes. Send, Send us, us ideas. Send us love notes of, yes. or ideas. Yeah. Yep. 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 And then uh, don't forget, uh, we're still looking for more ideas to indoctrinate uh, Alicia into R- Rhode Islandisms. Rhode Island. <clears throat> That's right. I'll that are uniquely Rhode anything, Island. Anything, I'll go anywhere. I'll try any yeah. Rhode yeah. Island. And, uh, and I'm thinking tradition. now, uh, one other thing I'm thinking might actually start, we may start to think about is uh, our own Instagram feed now that we're starting to do selfies uh, mid show. I'm going <laughs> to make this promise. If, if it's suggested, I will not turn it down. I will try any food. I'll go back to food, yeah. Any, yeah. Okay. I will visit any location in Rhode Island. I'll give it a shot. I'm not going to turn it down. I'm one for, I'm All one right. for trying I like your things. sense of I like adventure. That. Yeah. I like that. I like that. I like that. So. All right, bring so it on. we <laughs> bring it on. <laughs> we uh, we're wrapping up this podcast, but uh, just to remind you, we are the Marketing Essentials okay. team, and we exist to help small businesses grow through providing marketing essentials expertise. Yes. Right. Until next time, see ya. Bye. Oh. 
Um, this is Alicia with her very first uh, Awful Awful, so another Rhode Island first. Am for... I on Facebook Live right now? No, no, oh, no. This okay. is just video. <laughs> doing a video. This is just video. Okay. But we'll post it. Um, so this is uh, this is very very first awful awful for Alicia, and she got a, a junior awful awful with Oreo because we didn't want to kill her. Um, yeah. So it's or yeah Oreo. Yes, I got the Oreo. All right. So you got oh, oh, you got to tell oh, us what you think. An Oreo. All right, guys, my very first taste of an awful awful, and I I wasn't sure if it was like a milkshake, but it's a drinkable. What did the menu say? Like a it just says it's a drink. It's, it's a, a drink. drink. <laughs> okay. So you may drink. For those of you who are wondering, not quite like a milkshake. And that's true because the consistency is completely different. It's not like this. That's really good though. Oh, you like that? I'm gonna agree this is my favorite so far. So oh. it's ranking above Yacht Club, ranking above Onlyville Wieners. Okay. And I like it better than the coffee milk. Yeah. So Awful Awful is the winner of all favorite Rhode Island things so far. Number one so far. And yeah. of course Bill, he that's got his one. he got his man size awful awful. And uh, vanilla, right? Vanilla, yeah. Well yeah. plain old vanilla kind of guy. Uh, I got a junior, strawberry. Because he's so, a junior. That's right. So hey, okay, junior, let's get let's uh we get more podcasts to do there, junior. Yeah, let's yeah. go. All right, we got to get back to our podcasting. All right. On a roll. Say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Cheers. everybody.